Hi, I'm John Ludy, and when I tell people that I live in a yurt, I get a couple of questions. A. What the hell's a yurt? And B. Why the hell do you live in one? So, I'm going to try to answer that. First of all, this is yurt, this thing right here. Not the thing, not the ugly blue thing on the left, but the, uh, the pretty uh, tan and green thing right here. <clears throat> what is yurt? A yurt is uh, an ancient structure. It originates on the steppes of Mongolia. And uh, Genghis Khan probably lived in one of these, and I guess there's a certain, you know, kind of um, romance in that. Um, but uh, what it is, is a structure that is built upon kind of a side lattice framework, and a canvas side stretched along it, and... Up top, it basically has a center wooden ring with these various support beams that go into it. Um, this particular yurt is the product of Pacific yurts. And if you want to find out more about its construction, uh, go on to their website. Um, but I got the yurt for uh, three major reasons, really. Affordability durability, and portability. Um, well, first of all, affordability. Uh, after about the property that I have placed this year on, I knew I wasn't going to be here full-time for a long time, so I wanted to put up something that uh, would, you know, well, we're getting into durability right now, but um, I, w I didn't know if I was ever going to full-time here. Uh, so I didn't want to really invest in anything really expensive or that would take an awful long time to build. So basically I built a platform, and in a subsequent video I will explain how I built the platform. Um, <clears throat> but I built, I built a platform that's basically non-invasive using deck blocks and 4x4s and 2x12s. Um, and... Once I had accomplished that, I was able to put the yurt up with uh, a modicum of extra help, mainly for the uh, top cover. I was able to put it up by myself within about six hours. And uh, the thing cost me, with a few amenities, this thing cost me about, I think it was $5,600. Now, it is a very, in my mind, uh, surprisingly robust structure. I mean, part of that aspect is because of its construction. Mind you, the basic uh, engineering notion was something that came up on the steppes of Mongolia. Uh, not exactly the most hospitable place, you know, it's not like uh, Bermuda or something. Um, the structure, uh, it is a flexible structure, uh, and it's extremely aerodynamic, and it withstands an awful lot of weight and wind. Um, so, very durable, which was great because in the winters in Wisconsin, I mean, in the summer it gets up to, can be up to 100 degrees here. In the winter it can get down to 30 below. Lots of snow. So, with a bit of internal support, um, this became a structure that I could leave alone for an extended period of time without worrying about it collapsing like a house of cards. So the durability, in my mind, is just fantastic on these things. The other aspect was portability. Um, I can essentially take this thing down. If I empty the contents out of this thing here, um, I could single-handedly take it disassemble it, and put it into that minivan right there <laughs> in its entirety. If I remove the, uh, the seats from the minivan, I can put it in there. Um, take me about three or four hours to do all of that. So if I decided that I didn't really want to 
make it through a whole Wisconsin winter in this, which is entirely doable. People live in these things in Alaska year-round. Um, I could pack it in the minivan and take it down south, or I could just chuck it in the storage space and come back to it the next year. So, incredible amount of flexibility. Um, so far, I've had the thing up for a couple years, and aside from neglecting some of the uh, cleaning of the top cover, uh, that's my fault, um, very little maintenance I've had to do on this unit. So, um, downsides. Well, um, there are a few. The windows, the windows can be a little bit of a conundrum. You know, you have to open and close them from the outside. Um, what's the other downsides? Um, it's a very thin structure. It's a canvas side. So, you can pretty much hear everything. And everything can hear you. <laughs> so, so, that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, if you're going to try to make it through a winter, which I wholly intend to do, um, you really need to um, insulate the thing. Now, Pacific Yurts and I think some of the other yurt companies sell insulation kits. Uh, I basically very successfully insulated this last winter for some of my winter visits by putting up blankets on the side and top and then... Uh, surrounding those blankets with a substance called Reflectix, which is, uh, I think, 97% reflective. So I created kind of a uh, bulk barrier and then a reflectivity. And uh, then I just had a simple wood stove in it. And uh, uh, we'll see how that does in 30 below. But again, I mean, if people can live in these in Alaska all year round, Shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, in Wisconsin, but we'll see. But uh, I just wanted to kind of give my uh, accolades to the yurt uh, and explain to people well, what exactly it is, because I'm encountering this question uh, all the time. So I can just simply point them to this video and say, this is yurt. Meet A. Eh? So that's it. I'm John Ludy, a.k.a. Off Grid John, and uh, that's my intro to the yurt. Uh, in a subsequent video, I'm going to detail things a little bit more, like what it's like to live in one and everything, and how I put the uh, how I put the uh, platform together. So there it is. Thanks. Bye.